a world had been created. Planet of extremely high level, located on the border between worlds, was invaded by the abyss. According to legend, only a sacred knight above the supreme knight could deal with this invasion. In Sarash, the military headquarters, preparations were being made to defend the world. The king who came from another world turned out to be Sarash's strongest warrior. The lord of the abyss named Thor was evil and powerful. He was angry that the heroes had upset him countless times over the past 300 years. Thor declared that today was the day of the hero's death. The hero, resolute in his intentions, replied that it would not happen. The legendary paladin Sarash, a hero himself, was ready to protect the world from evil. Thor asked what needed to be saved, and the hero stood before him, sheltering those creatures. Thor warned that if the hero did not enter the sanctuary, he would not be able to overpower it. This added to the seriousness of the battle. He ordered the heroes to be obedient and accept their death. The hero declared that Thor was the one who would die today. Battle began. The hero fought with tremendous strength and determination, yielding nothing. The legendary holy paladin stood against a great evil. The hero summoned the power of the Holy Spirit, summoning a powerful spell to fight Thor. Thor screamed that it was impossible. He, the Lord of the Abyss, could not be defeated. Thor insisted that no one could defeat him. Earth watched the majestic battle changing the fates of the planet. The low-level world known as the Blue Star Alexia became the scene of this epic battle. One of the spectators noticed the hero's luxurious hair. The hero radiated determination. His path was difficult, but he was willing to fight to the end. The girl was amazed by the hero's appearance and admired his armor. The hero wondered why he was not dead and where Thor was. He began to search for the enemy, remembering that the Web of Laws is a source of power for all worlds. The hero wondered where he was. He realized that he was back on the Blue Star after moving to another world for hundreds of years. The hero asked the girl what year it was on Alexia's calendar. She replied that it was 971, and the hero was surprised that it had only been three years since his disappearance. He decided to find out what had happened during his absence and what had changed. The hero felt like he was back in good old Alexia and began to reflect on how much time had passed. He decided to go back to his old home to see what had changed. The hero realized that the Blue Star was an ordinary world, but his mission wasn't over yet. It seemed to the hero that one of the people had upset the chicken. He continued on his way, realizing that new challenges and adventures awaited him in this world. The hero wondered if he could call a cab. He realized that he had not brought any of the blue star currency. This caused him concern. He decided that he could exchange the things he had for money, though that could cause a lot of problems. Looking for a solution, the hero headed to the store. The hero was greeted at a store called Precious Happiness. He asked if they accepted gold. The sales clerk confirmed that they do accept gold and directed him to the manager. The store manager, smiling, asked the hero if he wanted to sell the gold. The hero pulled out a coin and showed it. The manager was interested and decided to check its value. The manager noted that the coin was unusual and had a magical quality. He assumed that it was not an ordinary item and suggested testing the material of the coin to find out its exact value. At the lab, the manager ran tests and verified that the coin was made of real gold. He was amazed at its purity and stated that existing technology could not achieve such purity. The manager offered to exchange the coin for money, saying that the exchange price was 400 yuan per gram. The weight of the coin was 101 grams. The total amount exchanged was 4,400 yuan. The hero agreed to the exchange, and the manager asked him to fill out the contact information and sign the document. The manager expressed his hope for further cooperation and asked if the hero had more such coins. The hero, having received the money, thanked the manager and left the store. He noticed that the manager was satisfied with the transaction and thought that he had received a great benefit. The hero decided to call and answer the call that came in on his phone. He found out that he was getting a call from the police station. His uncle Jun wanted to talk to him. The uncle informed him that they were going to demolish the streets in the neighborhood where the hero's house was located.
He advised the hero to return home as soon as possible to deal with the situation. The hero, thinking that the uncle might have forgotten something important, decided to find out more about what had happened. He planned to return to Linjiang City, take care of the problem. The hero received another call and found out that the caller was from a government-run child care center. They said that his daughter, Ju Bao's care time was coming to an end, and asked if he wanted to extend or take her away. The hero decided to return home. He was surprised that only a few years had passed and thought that the rogues had become less skillful. He traveled to the city of Linjiang, preparing for a new challenge. The hero got out of the car and said goodbye to the driver, who wished him a good day. He headed towards home and felt a pain in his back. Arriving home, the hero uttered a swear word, feeling relieved. He opened the door and was greeted by flashes of energy, reminding him of his sacred mission. The hero, upon entering the house, saw a picture of his mother. He remembered how he had always wanted to bring her back to life, and that this desire had sustained him through his most difficult years. Despite becoming a holy paladin, the hero was still unable to touch the endless river sticks, hung high in the void. The hero turned to a picture of his mother, confessing that he had not found a way to resurrect her despite his best efforts. He sensed how much needed to be cleaned up in the house. He decided to clean up the house and wanted it to look as good as new. Using his powers, the hero began cleaning and rebuilding. A spirit named Ah Lu, a slave wizard spirit, appeared and confirmed that the hero's wish was law to him. He also reminded the hero to fix the door. As he gathered himself, the hero felt his spell Coda Ostrovo Cleansing Flame begin to take effect. He felt something strange as he left the house. The hero used the Paladin Spiritual Sight spell to see the real nature of the world. This spell was common to knights and sorcerers, allowing them to see what is hidden from normal sight. The hero used the Paladin Spiritual Sight spell and saw a huge spider in the center of the Web of Laws. He marveled that the blue star world appeared to be supernatural as well. The hero wondered why the Web of Laws vibrated so strongly, and speculated that the world could be hiding millennia of magical beings. This was a new mystery for him. After receiving a message from the community center, the hero realized that his adventures would never end. He decided to check the legitimacy of the situation and turn to the official website. After looking at the site, the hero noted that it looked legitimate. He decided to contact the agency and make an appointment for the next day to sort out the issues. The hero made an appointment for 2 p.m. and hoped to find out more information. He was determined to find out what was going on and what he had to do. Teacher Wang, talking to the little girl, calmed her down by telling her that she had not been able to contact her aunt, but had recently spoken to her dad on the phone. The little girl asked when her aunt Chin would pick her up. Teacher Wang replied that she hadn't been able to contact her aunt yet, but her dad would be with her soon. The girl was surprised and asked hopefully if her dad had really called. We wanted to meet him soon and see what he had to say. Teacher Wong assured the girl that her daddy would come and pick her up soon. The girl looked forward to meeting her daddy while hugging her toy. At the moment, the biggest obstacle to the continuation of the once Linjiang project was the relocation process of Linjiang City. Many families have not yet agreed to relocate. In addition, if the project is approved next month, construction could start as early as this year. Guang Yinyi, the heir to the Precious Happiness Corporation, discussed this at the meeting. An assistant informed Guang that a visitor had come. Guang told her to let him in. The hero entered and introduced himself, assuring Guang that he would not disappoint him. Guang, holding a gold coin in his hand, sarcastically asked if this was the treasure the hero spoke of. The assistant looked at the coin with interest. Chen Mingju, a descendant of the Chen family of the capital, noticed that the coin was unusual. Ye Ying Xiu, Chen Mingju's cousin, recognized the coin as a spiritual object. She questioned whether this gold coin really had a spiritual origin. She was interested in this artifact and its potential. The assistant turned to the hero, asking him to tell her about the origin of the coin. The hero, realizing the importance of the moment, began to explain. On the street, the hero remembered how he had recently sold the coin to a man in armor, 
and that he had his phone number. He went to the police station to find out more. Upon seeing Uncle Jun, the hero realized that he was recognized. The uncle, surprised, asked where the hero had been all these years. The hero explained that he had gone on a long journey. Uncle Jun was happy to see the hero and noted that three years had flown by. He suggested that they deal with the paperwork first and then have a chat. The hero learned about the plan to demolish the neighborhood and decided he needed to act. He remembered the importance of consent and thought about the next steps. Leaving the site, the hero met a man and told him that he intended to do something about it. He noted that he did not believe demolition was possible. The hero saw the community center building and couldn't believe it was the right place. He felt ready for a new challenge and action. The hero came to the facility and introduced himself. Saying his name was Zuo Yi, he had an appointment with Ms. Wang Huang. Staff member asked the hero to wait while she called Ms. Wang Huang. The hero sat down on the sofa, thinking that if there was nothing wrong with the establishment, it was unclear what kind of lies were being talked about. He felt a strange pain in his heart. Soon, Miss Wang Huang and the little girl appeared. The hero used the spiritual sight ability and discovered that this little girl was his direct descendant. The hero couldn't believe his eyes. The little girl asked the hero if he was her daddy. The hero was astonished and didn't know what to answer. Miss Wang Huang confirmed that he was Zuo Yi and that he needed to explain the situation. Three months ago at the Children's Center, Miss Wang Huang spoke to another woman who had left the girl in her care. She left the hero's contact information as an emergency contact. Miss Wang Huang explained that she was unable to contact that wet woman, so she contacted the hero. The hero wondered why he was listed as the emergency contact and remembered that he had never heard of Su Wan Ching. The hero, sitting with the girl on the sofa, realized that the situation was exactly as Miss Wang Huang had explained. He asked Miss Wang Wang if he understood correctly that he was here to take the girl home. The hero confirmed that he would take the girl home. Miss Wang Wang asked him to wait and sign the papers. She explained that according to the center's rules, he had to wait for the results of the paternity test. The hero agreed to wait and sign all the necessary documents. He said goodbye to Miss Wang Wang, who wished them luck and hoped that the situation would be resolved soon. The girl said goodbye to the hero, calling him daddy. The hero realized that if he wanted to take her home, he needed to resolve the demolition of the house as soon as possible. The hero pondered how some people can afford to destroy buildings without caring about those who live in them. He told the spirit named Ah Lu that it really annoyed him. Ah Lu, sitting next to him, confirmed that some people's greed knows no bounds. The hero decided that he would fight to protect his home and the responsibility he had taken on. The hero almost forgot about protecting the house and activated his powers, entrusting Alu to guard the house. Spirit assured that he was up to the task. At that moment, phone call rang. The manager of the jewelry store, Guang Qishan, called, who reminded the hero that he had sold them a gold coin. The manager asked if the hero still had any such coins left as the store would like to buy them. The hero remembered that the coin from Sarash is a low-level item that only the best craftsmen can make. He informed them that he was no longer selling them. The manager tried to talk the hero down, stating that their store was willing to pay a high price. The hero clarified whether the price in question was five or ten million. The manager asked for time to clarify the amount. At this time, the hero pondered that Guang Chishan knew how to distinguish between good goods and bad goods. Manager called back and offered 10 million for each coin. The hero realized that this offer would not be honored and decided to end the conversation by laughing at the manager. He said that he would not talk to him again. Guang Chishan resented the hero for laughing at him and ordered his assistant to get the hero's phone number. He also decided to send a couple people just in case. The aide agreed and sprang into action. At that moment, from Guan's window, cars and helicopters could be seen heading towards the hero. Guan decided to wait and clarify the situation before acting. A group of people led by a large man decided to break down the door so as not to waste time. They began searching for the hero inside the building, hoping to find him quickly. 
The leader ordered them to search for the hero faster. Suddenly a monster appeared and attacked them with fury. The people panicked trying to figure out what this creature was and how to deal with it. The monster brutally massacred the humans, which left them terrified. The leader realized that he had underestimated the power they were facing. He ordered his men to retreat. The hero, watching what was happening, admitted that he hadn't noticed the appearance of such strong enemies. He wondered why his heart began to ache again after the battle with Thor. One of the survivors decided that he would have to fight such a monster more seriously. He prepared for the battle, planning to attack the monster with maximum force. The hero watched the battle and noted that the opponents were weaker than he expected. He figured they were easy to defeat because they didn't pose a serious threat to him. When he saw a man on a motorcycle, the hero thought the man was trying to escape. He wanted to figure out who was behind this man and what kind of people were hiding behind his back. The hero received a call from an employee of the center, who said that the test results would be ready soon, and offered to visit the girl. She had missed the hero for the past two days. The girl, hearing that her daddy would be coming soon, got excited. The hero promised to come and saw that Alu had put things in order. The hero asked him to clean up the remaining traces of the battle. Alu wondered how he could manage it. He wasn't sure if he could clean up everything that was left after the battle. The hero headed over to the girl to take her home. The hero called Teacher Wong and asked her to come out to see him, since he was at the gate of the children's center. Teacher Wong replied that he could just come in to see his daughter. The hero, holding a big teddy bear, refused to enter and asked to hand over the toy. Teacher Wong was surprised and asked why he didn't want to go inside. The hero confessed that he didn't know how to get along with children. Teacher Wong reassured him, saying that he was more important to Bauer than the toy. The girl had been waiting for him for a long time. The hero agreed, handed the teddy bear to Bauer. Teacher Wong informed the girl that her daddy had brought a present. Bauer got excited and ran to the toy. Bauer thanked the hero for the teddy bear. The hero was glad that he liked the gift. The girl suggested that he play a board game called Goban. The hero agreed, and they started the game. The girl lost, but she wasn't upset. Teacher Wong noticed that the hero was doing a great job with the kids, despite his doubts. Hero received a message from the police station requesting immediate arrival. He told Teacher Wong that he needed to leave immediately for an important matter. Teacher Wong expressed concern. The hero assured her that everything was fine. The girl noticed her daddy leaving, but the hero promised to return soon. The hero went to the police station, where there was an argument with two men. They resented the fact that their application had been rejected. The hero learned that the men had complained about him. He went in and thanked them for their concern, assuring them that he was fine. The men were shocked to see the hero alive. One of them blurted out that the hero couldn't be alive. The hero confidently stated that everything was under control and left the station. Guangzhong indignantly asked the hero why he didn't report his return. The hero replied that he didn't know the Fang family well and didn't have to inform them of his actions. Guangzhong emphasized that their family's blood runs in the hero, despite what he said. The hero calmly pointed out that his last name was Ju, not Fang, and that his wishes were not destined to come true. Another man in a blue shirt tried to intimidate the hero, claiming that the old house would soon be demolished and threatening him with death. He suggested that the hero hand over the land, or else he would have to face his mother. The hero, enraged by the threats, activated his powers, and the man was horrified to realize that a monster was standing in front of him. The man screamed that the hero was a monster, his partner backed away in panic. The hero ordered the terrified men to tell Fang Yisheng to stop their actions and stop trying to evict him. He told them to inform their masters to stop sticking out their claws. The hero then said goodbye to Uncle Jun, telling him that it was time for him to leave. Uncle Jun wished him to be careful. He reflected on what had happened to the hero over the past years. And Lu, the spirit, asked the hero what important business he had today. The hero replied that he was going to get a job. And Lu was surprised that the hero, being the strongest paladin, 
was going to work with ordinary people. The hero reflected on the fact that he had been away from the Blue Star world for too long. He decided that a normal job would help him get used to this world and prevent his daughter from thinking her father was unemployed. Along the way, he planned to listen to the story of baby clones and at the same time check if the old man had any new apprentices. The hero remembered how the master had saved him from a wolf attack when he first arrived in Sarnash. The hero got on his motorcycle and headed into town, calling for the spirit to follow him. He was surprised at how much the town had changed in a few years. A business that used to be successful was now a hot drink store. When the hero stepped inside, he saw a woman at the front desk. He asked her if they were hiring fencing instructors. The woman recognized him and was surprised that he had returned. The hero and the woman, whom he called his older sister, continued talking. She led him inside, asking him when he had returned. The hero noticed that he couldn't see the teacher. The woman, smiling sadly, said that the teacher had died six months ago. The hero was shocked by this news, as he thought the master was the strongest person. The older sister explained to the hero that their father was old and inevitably fell ill. She offered to discuss the details of being a fencing instructor. The hero noticed that she tried to avoid the topic of the master's death. The hero figured that if the older sister was hiding something, his questions would not yield any results. He expressed his desire to honor the master and asked his sister to help him do so. The hero went to the altar and lit incense in honor of the master, expressing his thoughts that he still couldn't accept his death. He promised to do his best to get justice. The older sister confirmed that the master's death was unusual. She offered the hero a place as an instructor, but warned that they would not be able to pay him a decent salary. The hero replied that the salary was not important and his goal was to protect the students. The hero decided to start work the next day. The older sister was surprised at how fast the results were and remarked that she hadn't even had time to prepare for his arrival. The hero was saying goodbye to his older sister while next to the car. She wished him luck in raising his daughter and said she would always be there for him if he wanted to share problems. He took his daughter's hand and lifted her up. The girl cheered as she held on to a large teddy bear. The older sister watched them, reminiscing about times gone by. She said it was still hard to believe that the hero had a daughter. The hero thanked her and said that now he had to go. He said goodbye to his sister and took his daughter home. The girl waved goodbye and promised to come to her tomorrow. As he approached the house, the hero heard the comments of Agu, who was watching the girl. The spirit wondered if it was the same child from the legends. The girl, without noticing what happened, was playing with a teddy bear. The hero decided to show his daughter the house. Tried to calm her down when she started crying. He didn't know how best to calm the child, and thought about how her reaction was different from what was shown on TV. As he approached the house, he introduced Agu to his daughter, saying that he was their servant. The girl clung to her father, wondering what a servant was. The hero explained that a servant helps them wash dishes, cook, and keep the house clean. The girl who hugged the teddy bear understood the explanation. She thought that Agu looked like Aunt Chin. Then she asked about the other monster hanging on the tree. The hero asked his daughter if she could see the monster. The girl confirmed that she could see it. The hero was surprised since Gogol was one of the best servants but only a few people could see him. The hero tried to reassure his daughter, saying that Gogol was their little servant who guarded the house and that he wouldn't harm her. And Gu suggested that the girl follow him to show the house. Inside the house, the heroine noticed a picture on the wall and asked who it was. The hero explained that it was her grandmother. The girl asked if the grandmother lived here to which the hero replied that she had traveled far away. Later, the hero and his daughter were sitting at the table. The heroine was eating noodles. The hero offered to wish the grandmother health and prosperity. The girl listened to her father, thinking about her grandmother. The hero showed how the smoke from the incense rose to the heavens, conveying their wishes. The heroine asked if the grandmother could see her. 
the hero assured her that her grandmother was watching her from heaven and blessing her. The girl ate and declared that she was full. Hiro told her not to worry and added that they would find something to do. He decided to do some cleaning and get the house in order. Hiro decided to cook the meal himself, despite the offer of help from Agu. The girl looked at the prepared dish and asked in surprise what it was. The hero wondered if he should order food instead of cooking. Later, the girl sat on the sofa, hugging a big teddy bear. Agu noted that the little hostess was tired after playing. Character felt tired too, thinking about how hard it is to take care of a child and cook. In the dream, the girl saw her mother and called out to her. The hero realized that a mental connection had been established between them. He was alarmed as to who could have gotten into his daughter's mind. The hero realized that it was a higher-level connection established between the girl and her biological mother. The hero hurried to the world tree, reflecting on his wound from the last battle and his inability to travel across the world. As he approached the world tree, the hero noted that it had materialized with the help of the planet's consciousness. A voice came from behind the trees, greeting the hero and calling him Achu. The great entity welcomed the hero back from the other world, inviting him to leave a trace of his great mind in this world. The hero responded with respect, calling her great consciousness. She offered him a blessing to aid him in traveling through worlds. However, the hero declined explaining that he could not give the seed meant for his daughter. The great entity was surprised by his refusal and questioned his motives. She explained that the blessing helped him not get lost in his travels and expected the hero to accept her offer. The hero offered to make a contract to guard the blue star, to which the entity agreed. The hero made an oath that he would live and die with the blue star. The great entity gave him a seed to protect the owner from calamity. The hero took the seed and promised to protect his daughter. The girl, upon waking up, remembered her mother. The hero realized that a mental connection had been established between them. The girl's biological mother held her picture thinking of her daughter. The next day, the hero was getting ready for work, causing his daughter to be surprised. The girl wanted to go with him, but the hero explained that she needed to change her clothes. The girl was amazed to see the fast cars. Father explained that the cars were speeding. The girl continued to ask questions, noticing the strangeness in her father's speech. They got into an accident where the hero recognized the injured woman. The girl saw the accident and pointed to her. The hero, seeing the injured woman, recognized her and realized it was her. There is a lot of noise on the road, and the purple-haired heroine jokes about her new car, referring to the fact that she recently got her driver's license. She is advised to be careful. Suddenly, the car loses control and the heroine is involved in an accident. Witnesses at the scene ask what happened. She screams in pain, and passersby try to help her. The hero rushes to the victim, holding his daughter in his arms. He asks her name, to which she replies, Van. The hero calms her down and uses magic to help her. The heroine begins to heal her wounds in front of everyone. The medics arrive and are amazed at her ability to heal herself. The heroine is taken to the hospital for further examination. Policeman asks witnesses if they saw the accident. They point to a man with a child. The policeman asks where he is now, and the witnesses point to the place. The hero's daughter, Bauer, looks at her father with admiration, stating that he can work miracles. The hero asks her to keep it a secret. The girl promises to keep quiet. Meeting her aunt, Bauer runs joyfully to her. The aunt asks why she is so late, and Bauer replies that she slept for a long time. Auntie asks about the road, which Bauer hints at what happened, says it's a secret. Auntie tries to fi find out what happened, but Bauer says he can only tell in secret. The aunt agrees, but the heroine, observing them, concludes that she may have been mistaken. The hero enters the hall, where he is greeted by a new teacher. Teacher wonders if he is the new teacher. The hero confirms that he is. Teacher with a smile on his face shakes his hand firmly. Teacher introduces himself as martial arts instructor Zhang Dao Hai and assesses the hero's physique. Suddenly, feels pain in his hand, marveling at the hero's strength. He screams in pain, realizing that the man in front of him is no ordinary man. 
The heroine comes with Bauer and says that now she cannot run away from school. The heroine allows Bauer to play but warns her not to leave the school. Hero asks his sister about the number of instructors and students at the school. Sister replies that there is only one instructor and two students left, besides her. However, she hopes for an influx of applications for training. The hero agrees after listening to her. The hero brings up the underground market in Hansen and asks if sister knows about it. He wants to give Bauer a present for her birthday. The sister confirms the existence of the market. Sister goes off to get a card explaining that the market in Sixi isn't bad, even though it recently became official. She cautions that there is a lot of chaos in the market and asks if the hero is sure of his decision. The hero, taking the card, decides to go to the market. He realizes that the place, though chaotic, can be useful for finding rare items. The hero is at a table when a wounded man named Yuan Bin runs up to him. He yells that everyone is dead. The hero asks what happened and Yuan Bin explains that their men were killed. Another character demands an explanation, asking Yuan Bin about the two men who were chasing him. He grabs Yuan's throat, clarifying that the pursuers were unusual. The hero intervenes and asks him to leave them alone. The hero at the table offers to elaborate on what happened, but then abruptly changes the subject and demands to leave the place immediately. He says that his new art will help with that. The others listen to him. The hero uses a magic item to find Yuan Bin's world and asks him to just wait for him to come. Yuan Bin agrees. The others warn Yuan not to mess with the hero. The hero leads Bauer to a large building. Bauer asks where they are going, and the hero replies that it's to this building. At the entrance they are asked for ID, the hero shows the card. The caretaker asks them to wait while he checks them in. The hero notices the fireworks and ponders why Bauer can't see them. He remembers how focused he has been on Bauer for the past two days. The hero holding Bauer notices the glowing ruins and wonders how an otherworldly aura can exist here. He suspects it's something important. Bauer asks what happened to him, and the hero reassures her, telling her that he's fine. The hero and Bauer follow the man accompanying them. He asks Bauer to be calm. The attendant asks if they want him to briefly introduce them to the market. The hero answers in the affirmative. The attendant tells them that the market is divided into five levels. They are in the main shopping area, and the stationary stores are on the lower floors. The hero wonders what to do if he wants to sell something. The attendant explains that you have to register at the self-service center, apply, and get a card. The hero thanks him for his explanation and gives him a coin. The hero senses something strange about this coin. The hero finds a wooden blank for Bauer's birthday present. Bauer is happy and thanks him for the beautiful wooden sword. Suddenly, a strange hooded man appears. A strange man thinks it is a waste to give such a nice thing to a child. He offers to make something for the hero addressing him as a craftsman. The hero notices that all the people have disappeared. The hero and Bauer confront the man. The hero asks him why he is following them. The hooded man looks tense. The hero holds the strange man tightly, demanding that he let him go. The strange man's eyes begin to glow. The hero calmly asks Bauer to take out his phone and play a game. Bauer happily agrees. The hero tells Bauer to turn around and play until he calls for her. Bauer gets excited, saying that Daddy is so kind and she loves it. At this time, the hero holds the strange man back. The strange man warns the hero that he is the most famous information dealer on the black market, and it is best not to touch him. The hero agrees and calls him an information merchant, which he finds helpful. Bauer, playing on his phone, shouts cheerfully. Hero and Bauer sit at a table in a cafe with the information merchant. Hero asks him to tell him everything he knows about the current state of the underground forces in Hangzhou. The information merchant calls himself Zhou Hong and tells them he has opened an antique store. He has created a name for himself on the black market and is now a private investigator helping to find treasures. The hero asks him to stop and say something useful. Peddler asks what exactly the hero wants to hear. The hero replies that he wants to know about the current situation of the underground forces in Hangzhou. The peddler tells him about the military forces in Hangzhou, which are divided into two parts. Eastern District and the Western District. 
The Eastern District has a fast-growing economy and is controlled by the Q family. The Western District is run by a group of local sports schools and trading clans. Hiro and Bauer continue to listen. The merchant tells of a great master who teaches his students. This master created a martial arts school, which is now run by Master Tianji. The hero listens intently, taking notes. Bauer is surprised by the story the merchant tells and looks at the hero with admiration. The hero learns that the patriarch of the martial arts school died, and the master of the school fought for Tianxiao's sword, was unable to take possession of the scabbard. This event divided the school. After the battle, the sword was split into two parts. The scabbard and the sword body. The two martial arts schools ceased to exist and began to feud with each other. The hero recalls how the master of the Shanghai school was later promoted to grandmaster, and the major martial arts schools tried to persuade Shanghai. Failed. The merchant reports that the patriarch of the Shanghai school died of illness, but on the day of his funeral, a student of the school, Xiao Yixiao, took away the sword. The hero wonders if this has something to do with the Shanghai Butskun. The merchant adds that he didn't know what the situation was until recently, but now it seems that the Q family is coming over to their side. The hero decides to go back and ask his sister. Bauer, noticing this, points to her father. The hero holds her in his arms, thinking about the master's death and her possible connection to the events. The hero plans to return to his sister to find out more, but suddenly a strange man interrupts them. The hero asks to mind additional business and is suddenly attacked. Suddenly a magic sword appears in front of the hero. The hero says he trusts the merchant and asks for help selling it, offering 10% of the sale price. The merchant wonders how such a valuable sword can be sold to a group of mediocre people. The hero reminds them not to forget to pay the owner of the building for repairs. At this time, Bauer tells his father that it is time for them to leave. The hero agrees and asks the merchant to take care of himself, reacting to a virtue sign that indicates helping someone. Outside, the hero sees a guy asking to be let go, claiming he has no money. The hero observes the situation, thinking about helping. The guy is in distress, being threatened with a knife and begging to be spared. The hero decides to intervene to help the guy in a difficult situation. Pairing for action. Two thugs demand money from a fat man. He explains that he has no money and calls for someone to help him. The fat man sees one of the thugs raise his hand for a punch. The hero appears on the spot and quickly disposes of his attackers. He asks the fat man if everything is all right, and then, calming Bauer down, heads home. In reflection, the hero turns to the virtues of chivalry. Remembering his teacher, he realizes that the most difficult virtues are justice and order, and that they are key to finding faith. The hero ponders how justice and order can be so important. He realizes that he has a chance to pass on, and decides to go forward. Embracing Bauer. Bauer remembers that her father promised to buy her another bun. Hiro confirms this, but first they have to go back to the martial arts school and meet Aunt Shan. The hero hurries back, addressing the fat man. Arriving at the school, the hero asks his sister about the master's death, suspecting it is related to Shanghai Butzkan. The hero sees a group of students and their instructor. The instructor tells them that this is their martial arts school and introduces Mr. Zuo, the fencing instructor. The instructor warns that Mr. Tso has little experience in teaching, and the students will have to put up with him. The students listen attentively as they prepare for their new classes at school. The students express their displeasure that they will be taught by someone with no experience. They believe that Mr. Zuo is not capable of teaching at a martial arts school, since he is only a third-level professional swordsman. One of the students indignantly declares that he will not allow such an inexperienced man to teach them. Bauer intervenes, defending his father by telling the students to stop insulting him. The hero takes Bauer in his arms and calms her down. He declares that he will teach the students himself. The students, seeing his confidence, agree. At that moment, a new student arrives. A new student excitedly announces that she wants to enroll in Mr. So's class. She says that he is her savior and has come to thank him. Another student also decides to join Mr. Zuo's class. He is surprised to see the new student's familiar face and remembers seeing her earlier in the car. 
The new student explains that her name is Wang Chukit and asks to be accepted into Mr. Zuo's fencing class. Miss Shan agrees, welcoming her to the martial arts school. Wang Chuk decisively declares that she wants to start training right away and turns to Mr. Zuo to start the class. The students at the school notice that the Tianchen Martial Arts School is in a deplorable state. They are surprised that it hasn't closed yet and wonder about its future. In the last picture, the principal of the Shanghai Martial Arts School, Hei Jian Gao, greets Miss Shan, asking her about the state of the school and hinting at their uneasy relationship. Charles Hei Jian Gao has brought many people to Tianchen. He declares that he will deal with Master Zuo, challenging him to a duel. Master Shang is outraged by Charles' insolence. Charles provokes the heroes by saying that small schools should not try to compete with big schools and demands humility from them. The heroes respond to his provocations. Master Shan asks what exactly those who have come ask for. Charles scoffs, stating that he just came to see the sorry state of their school and to practice. Charles offers to hold practice bouts between his students and Tian Chun's students. Master Shan refuses at first, but then decides to accept the challenge to defend the honor of the school. The hero prepares to fight Charles despite the protests of those around him. Master Shan warns that it could be dangerous, but the hero is determined to fight. Charles looks at the hero condescendingly, stating that he is not worthy of fighting him. He agrees, however, so as not to create conflict. Charles summons his students, Xiong Wu, Chu Kung, and Wang Haibin presenting their levels. The hero listens intently, realizing the strength of his opponents. Master Shang is concerned about the level of Charles' students, but decides to hold the duels anyway to defend the honor of Tianchen's school. The hero and Master Shang discuss strategy. Charles, on the other hand, watches their training, confident that his students will win. Charles warns that their school will be destroyed if they lose. Master Shang decides to defend the honor of the school at all costs. As he prepares his students for battle, Charles Hei Jiang Gao offered Master Shan a bet. If her school wins, he will return the Sword of the Heavenly Sea, but if she loses, she will have to close the school. The hero asked Master Shan to agree despite her doubts. He convinced her that this was a chance to get the sword back and restore the honor of the school. Charles mockingly pointed out that mentioning the Heaven Sea Sword was a big bet. He accepted the hero's challenge promising to live stream the match for the official website. The hero resolutely stated that he would be the one to fight first. He didn't let his associate go first, confidently saying that he had a point. Hero prepared for the fight despite the concerns of his young daughter Bauer, who was afraid for him. He explained to Bauer that this was a match, not a fight. Bauer, worried about her father, wanted to protect him. The hero reassured her telling her that he could handle it and that she should just watch. Charles asked if Master Shan was ready. The hero, determined to fight, replied that it was okay to start. Excitement and determination were on his face. Master Shan watched the preparations, knowing that the honor of the school was at stake. She hoped that their efforts would not be in vain and that they would be able to protect their legacy. A cell phone screen shows the Shanghai Martial Arts School. The onlookers are discussing that the fight is about to start. Charles Hei Jiang Gao confirms with a smirk that the fight will be exciting. The heroine's older sister stares at the screen, not believing that her brother will fight. Her friend informs her that Teacher Ju's opponent has hidden power, to which her sister is surprised. The fight begins. The opponent attacks the hero. Little Bauer notices the danger. Her eyes shine and a protective spiritual essence appears. Bauer decides to protect her daddy, uses the power of the seed, and channels the energy. The sister's friend is shocked, notices Bauer using the power. The hero notices that the spiritual force is forming the branches of the world tree. The opponent stops, not realizing what is happening. Bauer concentrates the force to help dad. The hero warns Bauer to stop. The opponent is surprised and yells, What the hell is that? Bauer continues to concentrate power using his spiritual essence. Suddenly the opponent freezes. The hero yells for Bauer to stop. The opponent is shocked. What is happening? Realizing that this is extraordinary energy. Bauer continues to defend her daddy. The opponent asks, Who are you? He sees the glow and realizes that his power is useless against such might. 
Hiro shouts with rage that for trying to harm his daughter, adversary will die. The adversary realizes that what stands before him is not an ordinary man, but someone with divine power. Phone screen shows a fight breaking out at a martial arts school. One viewer hopes it's a joke, while another confirms the use of extraordinary energy. In the fighting room, the hero's opponent is surprised that his life is threatened by something. He realizes the seriousness of what is happening, realizing that he has encountered extraordinary energy. The hero suddenly disappears, causing everyone to gasp in surprise. The camera captures him starting to fly, and the audience discusses his capabilities. The hero rises into the air, demonstrating his abilities. The enemy below realizes that he cannot win in this situation and begins to panic. Chaos ensues in the battle room. The opponent asks who the hero is and why he has such power. At this time, Bauer gains immense strength. The hero, holding Bauer in his arms, challenges the opponent to a fight. The opponent tries to handle the situation but doesn't realize what is happening. The hero encounters another opponent who realizes that Bauer has extraordinary power. He tries to find out why Bauer has become so strong. Teacher Sean explains that the adversary wanted to trap Sean High School. The adversary realizes that he has encountered an extraordinary power that he cannot defeat. The hero confirms that he has come to destroy the place. Bauer demonstrates his power by supporting Papa in his quest to defeat the adversary. The enemy shouts, asking who the hero is and what he is doing here. The enemy threatens the hero with paying with his life for his actions. The adversary asks if the master is okay but sees the master fall. The adversary vehemently states that the hero will pay with his life for this. He then insults the hero. The antagonist demands an explanation of where Wang Haizei, who was brought to the school, is. The hero replies that Wang disappeared under the influence of the sword energy. The adversary recalls the master recounting this incident. He tells the hero that his student has made a great mistake and will be punished. The adversary threatens the hero with a single blow to end it all. He suggests that the hero's students will fight to the end if the hero doesn't take his blow. The hero says that without the enemy's permission, his students would not dare provoke him. The enemy accuses the hero of allowing himself too much. The opponent's disciples offer to fight for their master. The enemy says he will take the hero's blow. The hero demonstrates his strength. The adversary is surprised that the hero has become an extraordinaire at such a young age. Cannot believe the hero's strength. The system explains that the hero has reached the level of a trainee knight. The opponent shouts that he has finally reached the extraordinary power of a patriarch. The opponent laughs loudly and declares that he wants the hero dead. He attacks the hero with fury, but the hero manages to fend off the blow. The enemy is hit in the chest causing glowing shards to burst out of his body. The hero uses the magic circle and asks the enemy, demanding an answer. The hero asks the opponent about his teacher Sean, trying to find out if the opponent killed him. The opponent answers in the negative, assuring that the matter is over. The opponent's students are concerned and call for their master. The hero remarks that if the adversary didn't kill his master, then who did? The adversary sits and looks at his phone. The phone screen shows an incoming call from Yuan Bin. The hero tells the phone that the extra-dimensional he was looking for on the black market killed everyone, and asks for help. He clarifies what class the extraordinaires were, and gets an answer. The hero, upon learning that all the class B extraordinaires were killed, becomes worried. He is surprised to hear the name, Zhou Yi. The conversation on the phone continues. The hero clarifies, didn't he say not to mess with Zhou Yi? He gets angry, expressing his disappointment. The enemy stands at the window and ponders. He admits that he doesn't know when the wizard lord will arrive, and isn't sure if he can handle it alone. The hero expresses doubts that Zhou Yi would be able to kill the Class B extra-dimensionalists if he knew of his existence. He admits that he won't be able to act alone anymore. The antagonist lays the phone on the table and greets Uncle Hikari. He introduces himself as Minje and says he's ready to proceed. Teacher Joe and his students are discussing a loud noise, and one of the students expresses concern that if Teacher Joe leaves, what will happen to their school? One of the students assures him that it's not a problem, but the student with the bag suggests that if he's as good as Teacher Joe, 
you'll be able to handle any difficulty. The heroine happily greets Teacher Joe, shouting joyfully that the teacher has returned. She quickly runs to him, and a nearby student with a bag is also happy to greet the teacher. The heroine reveals that she is now Teacher Joe's student by showing her ID card. Teacher Joe calmly accepts this, watching the joyful students. Teacher Joe returns the sword to the heroine, saying that he has returned it. The heroine thanks him, and the student holds the baby in his arms. The heroine wonders why Teacher Joe is back so early, since she hasn't finished cooking yet. A woman with an apron comes out of the other room, surprised by the teacher's arrival. Teacher Joe greets the woman, saying that they haven't seen each other in a long time. The woman invites them to come in and sit down. Teacher Joe says that he is not going to idle chatter, but has come to ask questions. Teacher Joe sits down on the couch and holds the baby. The woman asks if it's Bauer, mentioning that Shang Yongzi told her about her. The woman admires the baby, saying that her mom must be very beautiful. Teacher Joe asks the woman not to avoid his words. He has to find out what happened to his teacher. Teacher Joe tells Bauer that she can play with Aunt Shan for a while. Bauer happily agrees. Teacher Joe picks up a book. The woman tells him that the teacher left a will that whoever can win will get back the sword of Tianchui's school. Teacher Joe asks how his teacher died. The woman replies that the teacher knew the character of the hero, so he didn't mention him when they saw him again. She says that if the hero is determined to find out the truth, he should listen to what she has to say. The woman tells the hero that after she tells everything, he should be cool-headed and not impulsive. The woman asks the hero if he remembers Lin Yu, who came to the martial arts school before him. The hero replies that Lin Yu was a poor boy who was met by a master. The woman explains that Lin Yu, the master's favorite student, was his relative. The master was already a grandmaster before his death, and Lin Yu was a beginner, which surprises the hero. The woman says that Ling Yu knew that the method of promotion to Grandmaster was hidden in a textbook. Lin Yu conspired with outsiders to kill the master and get the textbook. The hero opens the book labeled The Holy Sword of Thunder Emperor Mo Lai and ponders the secret that might be in the textbook. He flips through the pages showing fencing techniques. The hero recalls his teacher telling him that in order to learn the ancestral teachings of swordsmanship, he had to marry his sister. The hero refused, and the teacher offered to teach him another art. The hero reasons that the teacher could not have wasted such good swordsmanship talent. He tries to understand how these techniques are no better than those taught by his ancestors. The hero practiced and always learned the same techniques from the textbook. He went back for it after the master was injured. The woman confirms that he came back. She explains that her father was seriously injured and lost his leg, but the Martial Arts League made peace to save his life. The hero wonders that such a strong master could have died. The hero suggests that there may have been an accident. The woman confirms that the master was very strong and was treated with care. Still, he died. The heroine, in an emotional recounting, states that they don't know how it happened. She explains that they even invited the capital's most famous doctor for treatment. The heroine reflects on Lin Yu and the Long Wu group. He asks the heroine if the Long Wu group has support in the capital and wonders why he is asking about it. The hero clarifies if the heroine wants to say that the capital's famous doctor was bribed by Lin Yu. She confirms this by saying yes. The hero, holding the book, asks the heroine to take care of Bauer for him and promises to come back to pick her up later. The heroine urges the hero not to be impulsive. The heroine explains that Lin Yu is now under Long Wu's command, and they can't afford to hurt him there. She says that she doesn't know where Lin Yu is. The hero, turning to the heroine, asks her not to worry and assures her that yet, he won't have any trouble finding anyone if he wants to. He asks the heroine and his aunt to wait for him at home. The heroine confidently states that he has found him. The heroine asks Mr. Tso to wait. Two extraordinary characters approach the hero. The hero asks who they are. One of the new characters introduces himself as Jin Shin, the secretary general of the provincial super cities management bureau. He shows his business card. The hero wonders about the city management bureau. 
The new character clarifies that it is an emergency management bureau. The hero admits that this is the first time he's heard of them. The hero says he knows about the bureau now. He adds that if that's it, he needs to leave. A new character mentions the hero's behavior in the martial arts halls. The heroine from the bureau begins to say that she is honored to have the hero join them on behalf of the emergency bureau. She hopes he will become one of them. The hero marvels at the spatial fluctuations and strong energy. He sees her activate a powerful spell and tells her it's an alien invasion. Zuo wonders how she realized it so quickly. The new character urges her not to be nervous, stating that HQ's response will be faster. Extraordinary rank A's have been dispatched. The new character warns the hero that these energy fluctuations are abnormal, and he needs to be careful. Hero replies that he will take care of it. A masked villain appears in the picture, emitting an evil laugh and declaring in an ancient language that the new world belongs to him and that he will destroy anyone who dares interfere with him. The heroine is shocked asking how this is possible. At this time, Bauer appears, asking for Zoe's help. The hero irritably replies that he heard her. The villain, looking at the city, marvels at its beauty and energy in an ancient language, comparing it to the beauty of his late wife. The hero approaches him. The villain, noticing the hero is startled, realizing that only those with high-level power can know the ancient language of Kun. He asks who the hero is. The villain tries to start a conversation, saying he senses the hero's immense power. He asks what they can talk about. The hero confidently replies to tell the man about his life. Villain uses a high-level chaos technique. But the hero handles it easily, knowing his abilities. The villain is shocked to see the hero's red sword. The villain wonders how the hero ended up here, since he should have died with Thor in Sardis. The hero reminisces, nostalgically about the old days. Villain chuckles, calling the hero a living paladin of the holiest level. He uses the deadly northern devil realm. The hero again easily deflects the attack. The villain decides to flee and inform the Tower Alliance about the holiest level paladin. He recognizes that the hero can destroy his entire plan through the space channel. The hero scoffs, saying he thought the villain would be more capable. He asks if the villain is trying to escape. However, the villain states that it is too late. The hero activates his knightly prowess, surrounding himself and the villain with the holy domain, preparing for the final battle. The hero floats in the air holding the villain. He asks if the man will answer his question. The villain below agrees with a snide grin, not believing in the hero's honesty. The hero seriously says he has some questions and the villain must answer them. The villain laughs, asking if the hero will let him go if he answers. The villain scoffs, calling the hero an honest man. He then says that since he's going to die, there's no point in answering. The hero replies irritably that the villain has pissed him off. The hero activates a glowing scroll. The villain asks in horror if it is the light of judgment. The hero confirms, explaining that the scroll was created by hundreds of bishops. The hero assures that the scroll was created with a great gift capable of destroying the enemy. The villain starts talking in a panic, promising to tell everything the hero wants to know. The villain confesses that it took hundreds of bishops and a legendary level pope to create the scroll, the light of judgment. They prayed for nearly a hundred days and nights. The hero listens intently as the villain explains that the scroll was created to destroy evil. The villain is horrified to realize that the hero knows every detail. The hero asks how a legendary level wizard has the ability to find planets and break through space. He thinks he needs to test the villain's memory. The hero remembers that the planet Blue Star merges with other planets. The wizards used a gold coin to find the Blue Star. The hero realizes that the gold coin given to him is probably from Guanji Shan. The hero remarks that he was lucky enough to meet the wizard right after he returned. The hero mockingly notes that all these wizards are greedy hyenas and don't share their coordinates. The hero thanks the girl for her help, and she replies that his powers are gradually improving. He expresses surprise at how much faith he can accumulate. The hero notices that the blue star is definitely not the low-level world it appears to be at first glance. He stares pensively into the distance immersed in his thoughts. 
The hero ponders that the original power of the world is gradually restoring space, which proves the youthfulness of this world's consciousness. He finds it strange that it is capable of generating high-level faith. He says that this faith can increase his power, and thinks about contacting headquarters to send some more people. The hero floats in the air. The hero tells the girl that there is an emergency meeting going on right now, and offers to wait for it to end. The girl asks why they still haven't left. The hero notices a girl and a man walking towards him. The girl asks if he has dealt with the intruder. The girl asks the hero to wait and offers to join them. Promises to think about it and talk later. The girl insists, but the hero leaves. The man tells the girl to read the information from headquarters. She is surprised that this is possible. The man explains that the result of the discussion has been published. The girl is surprised to read the information on her device. The man says that the director wants them to come back for a report. The hero reflects on the death of the master. The hero arrives home and is greeted by his sister and asks if everything is okay. He reminds her that tomorrow is Bauer's birthday. The hero suggests that they take care of the preparations for Bauer's birthday first. They both are ready to start the preparations. The hero returns to the old Zuo family home, sees the holiday decorations. Bauer yells that dad is in danger, showing her concern. Bauer calls out for Papa. The hero calms her down, telling her that everything is fine. The hero notices that Bauer's mental recovery is going well. The hero did not expect that the overuse of spiritual power would cause Bauer's world tree seed to grow. At this time, he is informed of the arrival of guests. The hero decides to go down himself and check out the unknown, extraordinary guest. The hero's sister has also come to Bauer's birthday party and wants to discuss work matters. Secretary Kian greets the hero. Bauer asks Aunt Shang to give her a hug. The hero offers to discuss work matters later noting that everyone else has gone inside. Chin Chin gives the hero a gift for Bauer, mentioning that they prepared it specially. The hero, holding Bauer in his arms, thanks her. The hero says that they are in the countryside, and inquires about the purpose of Chin Chin's visit. The Ta explains that she wants to invite the hero to join their bureau. Chin Chin jokes about the hero's unusual butler appearance. The hero wonders how he can join their bureau. Ching Chin shows him the hiring instructions. The instructions include the different levels of employees, their duties and privileges. The hero reads carefully to see what working conditions the bureau offers. The hero receives documents from Chin Chin confirming the third level. Chin Chin suggests that the hero come to the bureau for a consultation on registration and rating when he is free. The hero agrees, suggesting that he wait to finish his work in the martial arts hall. The butler holds up a huge egg, surprising Bauer and the other children. Bauer asks what the egg is. The butler explains that it is a birthday present for Bauer. Dog. All the children are surprised by such an unusual gift. The children question whether dogs can lay eggs. The butler suggests that Bauer break the egg to see the present. Bauer agrees, touching the egg. The egg opens and a puppy emerges from there, emitting a glow. Bauer is thrilled with the gift and thanks her father for the cute puppy. The hero tells Bauer that she can give the puppy a name. Bauer thinks about the name, remembering many different options, and eventually decides to name it Pike. Bauer happily announces that the puppy's name is Tyke. She hugs the puppy and Butler smiles. The puppy looks pleased. However, the hero suggests that if Bauer had known what this Cerberus would become in the future, she might not have been so happy. Early in the morning, Bauer asked the hero where Taike was. The hero said that the butler took him out for a walk. Bauer asked what a walk was. The hero explained that a walk is when you go outside with your pet. At this time, the butler and Taike returned from their walk. Bauer happily gave Taike a hug. The hero noticed that the ringer on his phone is silent. He asked the butler to help Bauer brush his teeth as he needs to answer the call. Hero took the phone and asked his sister what was wrong. His sister told him to come to the martial arts school urgently. He asked what was wrong, but his sister couldn't explain over the phone. Hero went with Bauer on a motorcycle to the martial arts school. Bauer noted that there were a lot of people around. The hero saw people taking cameras and taking pictures. The reporter explained to the viewers that yesterday, a video appeared on the internet 
where one of the instructors of the Heavenly Initiation Martial Arts School kicked out a window with his foot and destroyed the Mountain Sea School. One of the viewers confirmed that this instructor not only has swordsmanship skills, but also legendary abilities. The reporter noted that many people came to pay their respects to this master. A crowd of people recognized the hero and started taking pictures of him. Asking if it was really him, the hero confirmed that it was him, and the crowd began to express their desire to become his disciples. Bauer was startled by the sudden attention of the crowd. The hero asked everyone to be quiet. He suggested that those who wanted to enroll get in line to sign up. The crowd started making noise and arguing about who was first in line. The hero sternly said that everyone should keep order. People started to get in line, and the hero along with Bauer and Taike made their way inside. The hero, holding Bauer in his arms, met the heroine who invited him to come in to talk. The hero was surprised, asking what was going on downstairs. The heroine said that the phone had been ringing since morning. The hero, sitting Bauer down, asked if they were popular. Hero replied that he was the one who was popular, explaining that his punch had been videotaped and it had gone viral. Hero wondered who all those people downstairs were. The heroine explained that they all watched the video and came to train with him. The hero wondered how quickly information spreads. The heroine suggested that the hero follow her. She explained that the people from the Sublime Militancy Corporation were already here. The hero looked out the window and saw them. A group of people from Sublime Martiality had gathered outside the building. One of them, Wang Sheng, approached the hero and invited him to become a mentor in their corporation. The heroine was outraged that Wang Sheng would do such a thing. She warned that the hero was a powerful man and should not be misled. The hero, holding the bower, politely declined Wang Sheng's offer. He said he wasn't interested, thanking her for the offer, and left. The hero looked sternly at Wang Sheng while holding Bauer in his arms. Wang Sheng asked apprehensively what he was doing. Hero confidently replied that Wang Sheng knew better what had been done to his master. Hero ordered Wang Sheng to go back and tell Li Yu that he would find him tomorrow. Wang Sheng, flinching, called the hero cruel. Bauer, delighted with the confetti, noted that there was a lot of it around. Another character congratulated the hero, saying that he had become a real star in the martial arts world. The hero said he hadn't taken them on as a student yet. One of the characters was worried that the teacher didn't like them. The hero suggested that if they wanted to be his students, they should show what they could do. The girl excitedly exclaimed that she was first and ran ahead. The hero watched her. The girl confidently declared that in the future, she could be called a senior battle sister. Suddenly, it became hard for her to move and she fell down. Surprised, she asked what was going on. The hero warned that if they couldn't stand on their feet, he wouldn't accept them as an apprentice. The boy looked at the girl anxiously as the hero held Bauer. The girl promised to be an example to the boy. Bauer, watching what was happening, asked her father what these people were doing. The hero looked ahead thoughtfully. In the past, the hero had trained under his master, who warned him that if he couldn't stand up, his training would be over. The hero remembered how he struggled to get up after training. The girl proudly announced that she would be a battle sister for the boy. The hero, holding Bauer, noted that now that the blue star had been discovered by the enemies, he would need help during the appearance of intruders. The hero announced that the two would be his apprentices from today. Bauer also wanted to become an apprentice, to which the hero agreed, naming her the youngest apprentice. The hero was informed that Secretary Chin was looking for him. The hero asked if he would be sent on a mission soon. Secretary Chin, smiling, replied that it wasn't an assignment, but a congratulation. She also mentioned that their school is now famous on the internet. The secretary explained that his superiors had asked him to bring him for registration and certification. The hero was surprised, but agreed. He then asked if he could bring two more people. They arrived at the tall building, which turned out to be the Riverside County Police Station. Bauer noticed with interest what a tall building it was, and the other character wondered why they had been brought here. The receptionist explained that their office was on the top floor. 
Next time they could use the underground parking lot and take the elevator up. The hero, along with Bauer, went inside. Inside, they saw many employees busy with their business. One of them pointed the way to the elevator. They headed towards the elevator, discussing the upcoming registration and certification. Bauer looked around curiously, asking questions. The hero answered patiently, explaining that it was important for their future training and work. Secretary continued to accompany them, encouraging Bauer. In the elevator, Bauer bounced happily in the hero's arms, enjoying the ride. The hero looked at her with a smile, reminding her that they had an important meeting ahead of them. The atmosphere was filled with anticipation and interest. When they stepped off the elevator, they were met by a senior officer, ready to do the registration and certification. Bauer listened intently, trying to memorize everything that was going on around her. The hero held Bauer in his arms as they entered the office. The receptionist said goodbye, leaving them alone with the officer, who began to explain the procedure. Hero and Bauer listened intently, preparing for a new phase in their lives.